Okay, we have at least two people. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let's see what the uh, mentally broken Keiichi tries to do with mentally broken Satoko. Oh my god, that just sounded so much worse than I imagined. Hmm. Mion and the others, having to set up for the Watanagashi Festival or something, invited me along, but I refused. Of course I did. How could they be taking it easy and setting up for a festival in this situation? Mion had a lot of nerve. The first thing when I did when I got back was take a shower. Not because I wanted to wash off sweat. It was all because I wanted to be even calmer. I already understood this, but killing that man would be so very easy. Yeah, Shion was only here for like a second. The really hard thing would be not getting arrested for it, so we could get our peaceful days back. No more wandering the peaceful days. As I thought about it, I realized it wasn't easy. Japan's police force had the highest arrest rate in the world, and Phoenix Wright won't be involved in anything for another 20 or 30 years at the very least. I would need to deceitfully pull off the perfect crime, and it couldn't be a half-hearted attempt. Still, it wasn't 100%. Yeah, Shion saw this and went, Fuck it, I'm out. Even the best police force in the world couldn't have a 100% arrest rate. I've read a lot of articles on trials with people brought up on false charges. They do a lot to determine whether they really were false accusations, but figuring out who the real criminal was is usually out of the question. Yeah, unless in this universe he actually dies from eating a necklace. Then, a lot of things go to hell real fast. And that meant perfect crimes did exist. In fact, perfect crimes were sort of like works of art. Yeah, he doesn't get a romance in the Canaan world either. His one shot at it is nowhere near him. They could even be respected and revered. You just had to look at the inundation of mystery novels everywhere throughout history. They dealt with all sorts of difficult-to-solve incidents involving secret rooms and alibis and stuff, but they all wanted to show one thing. They wanted to show the beauty of a perfect crime. There was something divine in the flawlessness of the word perfect. Oh, how far are you in Trials and Tribulations there, Lady Mage? How, how far did you have you gotten in that game? Because there, because I just wonder if you about to. Okay, so you saw Mia's last, or you saw Mia's first case, right? And uh, you get to realize that her first two cases, even despite the gap in between them, almost ended the exact same way. There, there's, there's something there. Okay. Yes. Perfect crimes were skills of the gods. And in that sense, the serial freak deaths they were calling the curse of Oyashira-sama. I understood. They must have been the works of gods. Each one appeared to have been resolved, but they couldn't stop it from happening every year. Yeah, skills belonging only to gods. Those are perfect crimes. And I'd be setting up my own crime before Oyashira Sama's series of perfect crimes four years in the running. And uh, you are in for a treat with this last trial. 
with this whole last case is amazing. They saved the best case for the last in that original trilogy, in my opinion. Oh, I love that case, by the way. If I were to put it boldly, I was challenging a god. Foolhardiness would be needed to make the decision. But I needed to be calm, cool, colder than ice to put that plan together. Kill him like a flame. But as systematic as ice. Starting now, I needed to retain both those ideas within me. Modeling my crime after a mystery novel wasn't actually a bad thing to focus on. Sometimes, kidnappings involving disturbing, original methods that made it into the newspaper were used as a basis for novels after the person was arrested. Stuff like that made it into the news. Day and night, for a very long time, mystery novel authors polished and refined their most fantastic artistic crimes. Imitating that could be a shortcut to planning the perfect crime in a short period of crime. Dang it, what was... What was Investigations 2 Finale? I'm trying to remember it. I know I've played it. I know I played the translated, you know, the patched ROM. But I cannot remember. Dang it, I'll have to look that up later. I will have to look that up later. See, I only vaguely... I, man, I do not... I've only played it the once, and that was years ago. Of course... I haven't read enough mystery novels to act all high and mighty about them. Yeah, I don't want to actually say anything about it. That's the problem. I'm just trying to remember. The one who really liked mystery novels was my mom. She'd read every well-known mystery novel from overseas, from past and present. Every time she watched mystery shows, she would always criticize them as having cheap tricks or being poorly thought out. Oh, and by the way, I know I think I've said it before, but uh, when we when I was watching the uh, Danganronpa three anime, I think his name was Kizakura. You know, the dude that wore the fedora and the suit and was really laid back and drunk a whole lot of the time. Yeah, I, every time I saw him, I couldn't help but think of Ray Shields. She'd read every well-known mystery novel from overseas, from past and present. Every time she watched mystery shows, she would always criticize them as having cheap tricks or being poorly thought out. I wonder what the perfect crime would mean to her. これまでの推理小説の中で、母さんが一番よくできたと思った完全犯罪。うん。母さんって結構たくさん推理小説を読んでるでしょ。Oh, it had nothing to do with the doors being cool. It had to do a lot more with the uh with the uh just general attitude of the dude. Where is it? Where is it? If I can find it. I got a screenshot from that game. Let 
that when I saw it, it actually made me laugh a lot. If I still have it. No, I don't know where it went. I don't know where it went. I was hoping. I was hoping I still had it. Oh well, it was a nice thought. It would have been a nice thought, but I cannot find it! Darn it! Oh well. And yeah, the mother should be really, really concerned that her son is asking about the perfect crimes. So you know, it's a bit of a difficult thing. Danny from Game Grumps. It wasn't like I was asking for my own amusement. She was deflecting the question, so I would somehow butter her up first and draw out an answer. Of course, well done mystery novels, yeah. They all have a unique charm to them, so it's hard to say which is the most interesting. You'd really have to force me to pick one. I want to know the title of my favorite novel. I want to know the title of my favorite novel. If you want to know the title of my favorite novel, you don't have any choice in the title. That was true. Then there'd be no point. <笑><笑>推理小説は解ける謎をいかに解くかの過程を楽しむものよ。解けない謎だったら、それは推理小説の題材になり得ないわね。そっか。それはそうだよな。主人公に解けなかったら、お話として成立しないもんな。Oh yeah, she has an excellent point. Was I being too simplistic? A mystery novel was basically a game. They were written so that you can get to the goal, so that you could solve them. But I couldn't use something so optimistic. It needed to be the be-all, end-all of tricks. So that we could, without a doubt, return to our old lives. Mom looked at me intellectually and grinned impishly. I'd never gotten to read it, but apparently one time, a long time ago, Mom had written her own mystery novel and submitted it for some mystery novel award. Apparently she was really into it. Don't even become stories. What does that mean? Keiichi? Well, yes. Secai. I mean, if you want to, I mean, look at Watchmen. Movie or book, you get kind of the same thing. The bad guy, quote unquote, bad guy, gets away with it. それはそうだよ。何も起こらなかったら何も始まらない。そう。何も起こらないから事件にもならない。探偵も呼ばれないから推理もない。I think she's on to him. Well, 
Well, here's the thing. Watchmen really isn't about superheroes. You only have one guy with actual powers. The rest of them just have a, you know, subscriptions worth of issues. But no, there's only one guy in Watchmen with any real powers. One guy is just really, really smart and he plans the perfect crime and gets away with it. My mom just told me something absurd. And she was saying it so smoothly, too, so I kind of tuned her out, but... She said something extremely important just now. そもそも誰も立ち入らない深い森の奥でおじいさんが一人暮らしをしているとする。うん。そのおじいさんがある日、斧で殺されました。ちなみに犯人は、うん、じゃあ、おじいさんの息子ね。おじいさんの家に来て一緒に
I left, getting my bike out of the garage. For now, it didn't matter where I was going. I just rode through the wind, trying to calm my excitement by feeling the cool air on my body. Where I'd kill him, how I'd do it, what time, and how to dispose of the corpse. If I had just those four things, I could get a good plan going. I was so surprised at how little there was to decide that, I shivered. Oh yeah, this is this is a great lesson for kids. This this is just a mad just a just amazingly good for kids. I'd been completely prepared to build this humongous plan over a really long period of time. But if I could just get these little things in order, I could put it into motion. Today was Saturday. I would have to kill him on the night of the Watanagashi. So as long as I was standing in for Oyashira-sama, I only had 24 hours remaining. Yeah, if you dispose of the corpse and no one finds him, say in that swamp, it, it's much easier. Satoko, just hang on for 24 more hours. I can't even imagine having to suffer through even more, but please, hold out for a little longer. I know you can't even last another second. I know that. But please just hold out. Your Nini will save you for sure. You know, I gotta say, I like the change in perspective from being from the guy that's planning to carry out the crime. I like that shift in perspective here. Outside, it was still early enough for the cicadas to be crying. Early afternoon. Evening was still a long ways off. I looked at the sky. At some point, it had gotten cloudy. Come to think of it, as I left the house, I heard on TV that the weather forecast was calling for a chance of rain on Sunday. The sky was the color of lead. If I heard a little bit of thunder, I didn't definitely expect a sudden evening shower. My first destination was school. Before explaining why I was going there, I needed to explain what method for killing that man I had decided upon. I decided the most suitable death. The one I needed to give him was the same as last year's curse. The same as the punishment their aunt had received, being beaten to death. Wouldn't beating him to death be somewhat unreliable? You may think that stabbing him with a blade would be more reliable, but this was something I'd chosen after a lot of thought. You just need to think realistically. Well, I mean, I understand that about Death Note and all, but I'm just saying for this series... Okay, that was just that beat in the music. For this series, being in the head of the person that's quote-unquote possessed instead of being on the outside running in sheer terror from that person is it is a nice change of pace and came about when it needed to I think the law prohibited carrying any blades longer than 10 centimeters I think so the blades available to me though long enough were limited to things shorter than a ruler you can probably understand how tricky it would be with such a short reach to go up against an opponent that might fight back. In that case, using a weapon with reach would be far more effective. It might not have the same precision, but you just had to hit the guy until you killed him. Both options resulted in death. With that settled, what's the weapon with the most terrifying force behind it that's also easy to carry around? At this point, you should immediately think of a metal baseball bat. I don't need to explain how terrifying a metal baseball bat can be as a weapon. A special note is the fact that you can carry one around in broad daylight and not be thought of as suspicious. Well, yes and no. I'm pretty sure it's stereotypical for uh, the thugs and the gangs to carry around baseball bats. A giant gardening act! That'd be perfect. Just those two points would have been enough to choose a metal bat for my weapon. But there was one more reason for choosing a metal bat in particular. I will speak about it later. 
After school that Saturday, my classmates were still having fun playing in the schoolyard. I could show up there and be the same as always, so nobody think I'm suspicious. Getting my hands on the weapon without looking suspicious was actually a factor I couldn't ignore. Yeah, because Satoshi. We all know it's Satoshi. I didn't normally play baseball, so if I went to a sports store looking for a metal bat, it would definitely be suspicious. I can't let there be a beginning to the story, so I really need to be careful about even that. That left school. At a location which my appearance would be suspicious, I would acquire the weapon. I checked inside the classroom through the window, but of course there was nobody there. The only students who would stand there were me and the others when doing club activities. Without us, the classroom after school was just an empty, unused room. Without glancing around nervously, as if I'd just gone to get something I'd forgotten, I casually went in the entrance. Yandari Simulator Prequel Confirmed. It looked like the teacher was busy with paperwork in the teacher's lounge. I didn't see her in the hallway. Naturally, that quickly as a shadow, I entered the classroom. The empty room was full of a strange, stagnant air that you couldn't feel normally. An empty classroom with nobody there. Maybe while no one was around, the desks creep out about of their own accord, licking the floors clean of dirt. If I suddenly stepped into a place like that, would the desks and their surprise fly at me, crush my bones, and eat me alive? Baka baka si. I felt regret after wasting valuable time thinking on stupid delusions. The students' lockers were lined up in the back of the classroom. The one I was looking for wasn't my own. It was a forbidden locker. One I had accidentally discovered one day. If one person has one locker, and why would only Satoko have two? I'd made a fuss about it once. After that, I learned it was Satoshi's locker, and he had the same last name as her. But of course, even though it was a locker for a student no longer here, looking inside it was still a shameless act. But one time, I let my curiosity get the better of me and took a peek inside. Inside, it was average and worthless. At the time, I hadn't been interested, so until now I'd forgotten about what had been in it. But now that I had, dare I say it, awakened, I remembered the thing that had been there. I opened the locker, and the stench of mold and sweat wafted out, like a gym storehouse that hadn't been cleaned in weeks. My face puckered at the stench, but I looked for it. Yes. Satoshi was on Coach's baseball team. Inside the locker was the Hinamazawa fighter's uniform, and it. The one Satoshi used. The metal bat. Yes. This was the reason I wanted to choose this bat. This murder would be carried out by me. But this wasn't originally my role. It was Satoshi's. But I would stand in for him and call myself Satoko's Nini. It was one of the rules for standing in for him. I reached for the metal bat and grasped it firmly. It was light, and yet its tip had enough heft in it, enough to easily imagine the horror if I brought it down with all my might. Satoshi, I'll give you one last chance to save your sister. Lend me your strength. You're a coward. But I will stand in for you. So if you still care even a little bit about her, you will lend me your strength. There's no more suitable weapon in the world for putting that man to death than your bat. Now, I just need to figure out where to hide it. Tomorrow, before the act, I would just stop by the school and grab it. Because I couldn't ignore the possibility someone would see me bringing it home and think it was strange. But I left it, but if I left it here, there wouldn't be a problem. Plus, tomorrow was Sunday. Not only that, it was the day of the biggest festival in the whole village. Nobody would be coming to school. 
I left out the entrance and went over to a construction vehicle parked nearby. We'd been warned by our teacher not to touch it just for laughs, so none of the kids would come near the vehicle either. They wouldn't, because if she found out they touched it, they'd be in huge trouble. I quietly hid it in the shadow of the vehicle. The chances of someone operating the vehicle tomorrow were slim to none. Because tomorrow was Sunday. Government workers had the day off. And from what my classmates had said, the thing had been left there for years now. Machines that haven't been moved in years, you can't just suddenly start them up again. So I was almost definitively fine in this case. The sunlight was piercingly hot. My head grew faint for a moment. Had the heat been this harsh for the entire day? A moment of dull thoughts like this was a moment of carelessness. I gave myself a couple of hits in the head, then looked around warily. Okay. Next, how to dispose of the corpse. Seriously, he went full-on Dexter for this, man. Good God.